I went to John and said, can we do an animated short that's a Pixar short? Let's do something that really says who we are. Eben Osby and Bill Reeves were teaching me how to use the modeling system. And there was a Luxo lamp sitting there on my drawing table. The model itself was the world's simplest hierarchy. It was a base, and then an arm, and then another arm, and then a head. And I started animating it as though it was alive and thinking about, okay, if a Luxo lamp was alive, how would it move around? You could see him connect with that and saying, oh, I see how that, this thing works. And I know one thing I was working on was the shadowing algorithm. Self-shadowing was the lamp turning around and casting shadows on itself. What would be a cooler way to show off this technology than having the moving light sources be these lamps moving around so the shadows changed uh, position all, all the time? Then the fateful day that Tom Porter came into the graphics room with Spencer, his son. His proportions were totally different than that of an adult. The head was so big. and lift up the arm and I could barely reach the top of his head and I started thinking, hmm, what would a baby lamp look like? And in the computer, I was able to scale different parts of the lamp differently. We didn't have the computer power to do camera moves. We didn't have the computer power to do background. So I was like, how about a wood grain on the floor? We have that, right? Yeah, OK. I can work with this. John had a very clear idea of what the limitations of the medium were, and so he told a story that he could tell in that medium and not have to invent stuff that was impossible to invent at the time. And we premiered it at SIGGRAPH. As soon as the lamp moved, people started going crazy. And then the ball came in, and they were going nuts. And I remember actually shrinking down in my chair, getting a little frightened, thinking, what, what's going to happen when the funny part gets here. It's only a minute and a half long. Before it was done, people were, were giving it a standing ovation. Poor Gary Rydstrom, his wonderful sound work was never heard at that screening because the crowd was just literally screaming their heads off. And people were just talking about it forever as the, the first, the first time they'd seen it. And, and the it that they had seen was the first time they'd seen emotion and character and storytelling in a computer animated film. There's curiosity, there's dismay, there's sympathy. There's bemusement, a whole range of things that he was able to get through to the audience using just a few joint angles in this thing. You realize that, okay, it's no longer a test if it's actually touching you in some way. They laugh, they cry, they go out singing the songs. And I'll never forget Jim Blinn, one of the giants in the computer graphics research world, came to me after the show. And he said, John, I have a question for you. And I thought, oh no. Jim Blinn, he's going to ask me about the self-shadowing algorithm. I know he is. I don't know that. He goes, John, was the parent lamp a mother or a father? And I just smiled, and I thought, we did it. We did it. You know, it's about the characters. Those early days at Pixar were really magical for me. I was the only animator. Ed Catmull and everybody said, okay, here's the new research we're doing. Let's figure out a story and make another film.